Welcome to Lamar Whitley Show. I'm your host, <laughs> Lamar Whitley. And I'm your co-host, Michelle Newell. Every week, we take the show to a different place. And today, we're here at the Western Pennsylvania Humane Society. Lamar, we're going to get a chance to tour this place, look at the animals, and see what they have to offer. And you've been a lot of different places this week, and you had a great week, of course. It's definitely been a great week, coming off a big win here in Hinesfield for the second week in a row. Uh, another big challenge we had for us, Jones Drew came in, a good running back for, um, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. But we went in there, and we took care of business. I think these past few weeks, we've just been proving everybody wrong by going in there stacking wins with the players that we have. You know, a lot of players, a lot of analysts, and a lot of people across the, across the league and across the world have been doubting the Pittsburgh Steelers because we've been banged up and over this old team. Yeah. And I don't know what's old, what's old in this football league, but we're an old team, but we continue to win. It was a big week for us. Um, we went in there, we had five quarterback sacks on defense. Um, you got two of those. Yeah, we got a lot of got a lot of third down situation. I think we did a great job. Really, in that first first half, we came out with a lot of fire and a lot of intensity. The second half, they kind of picked it up a little bit, which brought the game which brought the game a little bit closer. But we came out on top. It was it wasn't the prettiest win at the end, but it was, but it a, was win. a win. Like That's all that matters. Yeah, exactly. It was a win. Exactly. But I want to ask you about the fight because I was wondering <laughs> what was happening on the field. <laughs> you know, during the play, there's always you know you know two guys and somebody got to show who, who's the tough guy and. On that play, we, we just collided a little bit. Yeah, and, and got and slow yeah, motion. Yeah, and, and got into a little tussle. And, you know, after the whistle blew, he didn't stop. I didn't stop, so we continued <laughs> to go. And, and they broke us up. And it was the personal foul against me and the personal foul against him, which actually turned out pretty good because we didn't give up 15 yards on the penalty, mm -hmm. and they didn't give up 15 yards. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, another personal foul against me could have really, in, you know, ejected me out of the game, and that could have hurt the team. You know, but after a situation like that, you know, as a player, you have to learn how to be smart. You know, you don't want to be thinking about that one particular play, you know, later on because it hurt a team. And I'm a guy in football, I have a short memory. You know, once the play is over with, it's over with, got to continue to move on. And that's what I did in the game. That's good. That's yeah. good. So what are you looking forward to for Arizona? Still that mentality of winning, of course. Still the mentality because every team is in your way of getting to the Super Bowl. You know, we have one objective at the end of the year and that's get to a Super Bowl. That's get number seven. And that's the only objective that I've had. Not only get, not getting to the playoff, but winning a Super Bowl. And going here in Arizona, it's a team where the coaching staff is from Pittsburgh. You know, so they know, they know, they know what we're gonna do. They know the plays that we're gonna run. But the thing is, they have to stop us from getting after the quarterback because we're trying to continue to stack wins each week and every week, you know, because like I said, a lot of people doubted us because um, we lost to Baltimore, we lost to Houston, but it's still early in the year. But right now we're stacking wins at the right time and we're getting guys healthy coming back and we're going to be fine. And you're doing a lot of stuff off the field, Lamar. How do you even have time to do this stuff? You have to make time. <laughs> you know, even though you're busy with football, you know, usually 24-7, but, you know, there's two sides of, you know, guys like us. There's Lamar Woodley. And it's Lamar Woodley, the football exactly. player. You know, exactly. so your whole yeah, life people is, have yeah. People don't understand that too. Because right. they don't understand right. that all the people time. People don't understand that. They think your life is just all about football. <laughs> no, when you go to your, you know, people when they work, mm -hmm. you go to work, and then after work, you come home. You know, I'm Lamar Woodley. I'm Lamar Woodley, the parent. And I'm Lamar Woodley, the football player. So really, there's three sides of it. You know, just showing the other side, you know, just in case that lockout happened again. <laughs> I'll be prepared for life after football. And today, you're Lamar Woodley, the animal lover. We're going to have a great time today. We're going to be able to tour this place. Again, this is Western Pennsylvania Humane Society. And when we come back, you'll be able to see all the great things that this place has to offer. This is the Lamar Woodley Show, and you're watching Hoopla TV. <laughs> Welcome back to the Lamar Willie Show. We're at the Western Pennsylvania Humane Society, and this is Gretchen Fieser. You're going to give us a tour of this place. I am. How are you today? I'm pretty good. Lamar's already in there. Looks like he's already got things started, so let's check on him. All right. Hey, Lamar, are you in here working? Oh, just a second, please. Ma'am, I, I, can I put you on hold, please? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Hold He's already this. handling business. He is handling business. We're gonna we're gonna have to <laughs> hire him part time. <laughs> Lamar, we didn't even tour this place yet, and you're already working. The more you can do. That's Coach Tomlow. We say the more you can do. So, um, 
<laughs> Hands a little full. I had to put a cuss on hold, but um, getting you, everything situated. You got her situated? Getting situated. All right, yeah. fantastic. And Lamar, this is Gretchen, so you know she's going nice to go. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I, I hope you enjoy it. Have yeah. you ever been here before? Uh, first time here. Um, I, I usually go right here to the restaurants all the time. I never realized the Humane Society was right here. Um, I'm looking forward to you know getting a tour of the facility and learning more about it today. Well, fantastic. Great. And Gretchen, what's the first thing people do when they bring their animals here? Well, we are standing in the surrender room, and that is what happens when an animal comes to the Western Pennsylvania Humane Society. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that we get over 14,000 animals here at the Western Pennsylvania Humane Society. And how that happens, that's 50, 60, 70 animals a day. There are all kinds of reasons why people need to give up an animal. It could be financial reasons. It could be uh, health reasons. There is a wonderful dog here named Harley, an 11-year-old chocolate lab, and he came because his owner had surgery and his owner didn't have anybody to take care of him or his dog. Wow. So unfortunately, the animal came here. It is an open door shelter. Mm -hmm. We accept all animals without a fee and without a waiting list. Mm -hmm. So it makes the Western Pennsylvania the Humane Society different than almost any other organization in the tri-state area. Now what's the uh, procedure that someone have to go through in order to um, adopt the animal, you know, as far as, you know, do you need to know what, how's the home life for the person that's coming to adopt the animal? Like what's the procedure that people have to go through in order to adopt? Well, I would ask you what your home life is like. Well, you would come in and you'd fill out a survey and you would tell me whether you have other pets at home, whether you have children at home. And you have a young daughter, correct? Three -year -old daughter. And you don't have any children, right? Yeah. So the kind of dog you're looking for would be a very family friendly dog. But you could have a dog that might not be as partial to being around kids because you don't have any young children at home. So that's one of the examples. You can take a dog home pretty much very quickly um, because we want to get so many animals into homes. I have another question because I've seen this on the news the other day where somebody let like a pet alligator. Right. Yeah. Could someone bring like if the alligator got too big could they bring that in here? We I have mean, got, this, we this have gotten like alligator alligators. snakes. Yeah. Gotten alligators you know? here? We have gotten in alligators. It's never a good idea to have an alligator as a pet. <laughs> I, people do it because they want to impress their friends. <laughs> right, right. That's, that, there's, there's a lot of reasons but that's basically they want to impress their friends. But it, a, an alligator can't really be trained to be a pet. Right. So yes, we do get them, and that's not something that we would adopt out to a regular household like any of us. They would go to a rescue situation, to a zoo, that sort See, of thing. I, I wondered about that. Once I seen that on the news, it was an yeah. alligator someone let out, and you know, it was huge. It's crazy. You know, yeah, so. yeah. We get every kind of pet you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Any animal you could imagine somebody having in their homes. Cats and dogs are the most common but rabbits, gerbils, hamsters, guinea pigs, all kinds of rodents, birds, reptiles of every size and description. Mm -hmm. Just last week we had a goat, and the goat lived in somebody's house, and uh, chickens. Chickens are a big problem now. A goat. <laughs> a goat. You chickens. step on the goat before I get on the chickens. I'm thinking about the chickens. <laughs> I'm thinking about the goat. <laughs> okay, so Gretchen, what happens after this process? Where do they go? Well, we're going to go take a walk through the operations hallway. So awesome. we're come Can you wait just a second, please? <laughs> oh, gotta get his, her, his customer off the hold. Man, yeah, could you give us um somebody to be with you in just a second, please? <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry for the inconvenience. He okay, definitely has a career <laughs> after football in customer after service. Football, this is what Lamar's going to be doing right here. I didn't forget about people I had on hold. <laughs> Somebody's gonna be with a man. And we're coming to the operations hallway, and this first stop is dog holding. And we are waiting for all of the animals to come and get vaccinated. They see a veterinary technician where all of the animals then are assessed medically. A lot of people are turning, um, like for lost dogs, I'm looking right here. Do a lot of people usually bring the dogs here and do y'all usually call it for the lost dog information? Correct, correct. We have a dedicated person to do lost and found, Lamar. And um, it's really one of the great ways to protect your pet, even if you have a collar and tags, is to put a microchip in your pet. And the microchip is a nine digit code that can be read by a scanner. So even if your dog loses his collar and tags or somebody removes them, that microchip will get to you. <laughs> <gasps> Lamar, what are you doing? <laughs> that, she doesn't have a microchip. Oh, but a dog or a cat could have a microchip, okay. and that way if that pet is ever lost, it can be returned to you. We're going to walk down further down okay. to cat holding. I thought and maybe this see, was Michelle. But also see the veterinary <laughs> technician's area. I was about to get $500 reward. 
Didn't it look like her? $500. And cat holding is the same as dog holding. You have a lot of animals in here for all kinds of reasons, whether they were stray, whether somebody brought them in because they couldn't take care of them, or maybe they found them. How many cats do you have now? In this building currently, at this moment, at least 400. Oh, wow. That's 400? A, at least 400, 400 cats in this building at this time. You know, summertime, the warm season, is what we call kitten season. And so we get a lot of cats and kittens during the warm months. Now, here it is in the fall, but it's still been relatively warm. So we still have a lot of cats and kittens here at the Western Pennsylvania Humane the, Society. Do y'all try to keep the male and the female cats separated? So We you know. spay and neuter everybody, oh, Lamar. So I'll just make, I didn't, I didn't know. I was, I was wondering, like. And even our kittens, even when somebody adopts a two and a half month old kitten, mm -hmm. they're already spayed or neutered because it's so important to spay or neuter your pets. People don't realize, you know, they think, oh, just one litter, or I don't want my animals neutered because of whatever reason they decide, you know, it's for somebody else. But this is what happens when people don't spay and neuter. Right? So when they neuter the, the male, they, <laughs> like the golf, they cut off his For golf neutering, balls. yes, they do, they do remove the testicles for the, for the male, and he's all squirming over here. Um, for the spaying, the spaying of the female, they remove the ovaries and the uterus. I wonder, can they still, you know? Can they still, yes. They still, they still can, absolutely. They probably don't have much desire to because their hormone production is much lower. But could they? Yes. I think about it as a form of birth control. So, and animal lifetime birth, control, birth control, lifetime birth control. Lifetime birth control. It's, it's an important thing for animals. We have a low cost clinic here for people who either adopt from here or anybody within the community that has a pet that is already spayed or neutered, or if they get a young pet, that they can bring here that they plan to have spayed or neutered. And it's a low cost clinic. So for example, you could come here and get your rabies shot for a pet for as low as $9. Oh wow. We're gonna take a walk through. Okay. And so you wanna come out through the clinic. So after an animal goes through all of its medical and behavioral aspects, then it comes out here and gets ready for adoption. Mm -hmm. So we're going to head to the dog area first because you're a dog fan, right? Correct. <laughs> All right. But I know you like bunnies, right? You like I like bunnies. Little, you like the little fluffy bunnies? No, I, like I mean, bunnies. I'm not into the bunnies. But what about the hamsters? <laughs> no, not the no, hamsters. No, no hamsters. How about birds? Maybe birds. Maybe birds. Maybe birds. All right. All Except right. when they get out the cage. Now, we're, <laughs> when we walk in here, it's going to be a little loud. Okay. But um, hopefully, they'll be a little bit quiet. <laughs> so these are dogs that have been up for adoption currently and some of them have been here a long time some of them a short amount of time now this dog right here this is Brock and he has been with us since back in the spring and nobody wanted him at our fallen timber shelter so we moved him here to the north shore in September so, so he's basically spent his whole life in a shelter so how do you determine which dogs like good behavior bad behavior like yeah. they all go through a behavior test and so we want to make sure that every animal that we have has gone through a behavior and medical evaluation to show that they're going to be a good pet right. oh look at that dog and you can see there are all kinds of different dogs, all shapes, all sizes, all ages. So you have the different dogs, like this Siberian oh, Husky. Like we have a boxer right here. Oh, look at the boxer. <laughs> and, you know, boxers are a very popular breed of dog. We yeah. see a lot of pit bulls here. And it's always sad about the pit bulls because a lot of times people believe that all shelters have are pit bulls. Yeah. particularly a city shelter but you can see obviously that is not the case I tell people all the time put your preconceived notions aside mm -hmm. don't come in and say I want this breed of dog because that's what you've always had yeah. you might just find your new best friend in a package that you never thought you would ever experience Sometimes people ask, do you ever get a lion or a tiger? Yeah, because where I'm from back at home, a guy had a, a lion as a pet. And I guess he had got, you know, real big, but he had a he had a pet lion. I'm thinking. That's not a good pet. <laughs> <laughs> We had a great day today. We had an opportunity to view the, view the facility, 
nice assistants, beautiful dogs. I mean, not only dogs, cats, rabbits, birds, I mean everything. You know, most people think of humane society mm -hmm. is just being dogs and cats, but it's a variety of animals here. That's right, and you can see some of the variety of animals. There's all types of animals back here behind us, and we have volunteers that are here for the dogs. You know, Lamar, this is a great place for a clinic and training for animals, vet clinic and training. So if you ever want to stop here, this is the place to be. Yeah, it's definitely, training is definitely important for a dog because I have a dog at home right now and he's still in training right now. So, you know, it's a little tough for me, but I'm definitely on schedule for taking him out, when to feed him, when to walk him. You definitely have to be responsible when it comes to pets. So did you see any dogs you like here you think you're going to take one? Well, you know, we already got a dog at home, so uh, two would be a, what, two? Two would be a little bit too much for me right now because <laughs> I still have my daughter, she's three year old, and with a dog. Yeah, that would be too much. Yeah. But they are cute dogs though. They're definitely beautiful dogs, but uh, not right now. <laughs> you know, maybe when I move into a, maybe a bigger place one day, maybe we can take on another dog. That's right. And we definitely want to thank our viewers out there. You've been supporting us so much, and we actually have something for you. Oh, we got a little giveaway. I'm going to give away um, a chair from one of our sponsors, Hometown Sports, uh -huh. Lamar Woodley chair. Um, I own one chair. <laughs> And someone else can own another one. It's actually me doing a super kick, my um, sack celebration. It's a soft, it's a beautiful chair. It's one of a kind. And I'm autographing for um, one of my fans out there. It is a nice chair, so We want to thank you for always tuning in. You never know where you're going to see Lamar. Lamar, we've been everywhere with this show. You never know, he might actually be in your neighborhood. But we definitely want to thank you for tuning in today. This is the Lamar Willie Show on Hoopla TV. We'll see you next time. The dogs love me. <laughs> Dr. Doolittle. Do